Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Parish on this, the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us prepare our hearts to hear the voice of the Lord and give a faithful answer. Let us also pray at this Mass for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Please join in our entrance hymn number 312 here at this table. Good morning. We welcome our visitors as we begin to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The children would come forth, and the catechist. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. 
Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, 
and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus was John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched, Jesus walked by. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Here I am, Lord. I've come to do your will. A man was concerned about his wife's lack of hearing, and it seemed like it was getting worse. He didn't know how to approach the situation, so he went to see his family doctor to discuss the problem. The doctor told him to do a simple, informal test the husband could perform to give the doctor some idea about her hearing loss. He said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be someplace in the house, maybe 40 feet away, and just say, honey, what's for supper? And if she doesn't respond, then move 30 feet, and, and then 20 feet, and so on. So that evening, he decided 
he would do that, and from the living room chair, he, in normal voice, said, honey, what's for dinner? And she was in the kitchen, and there was no response. So he got up and moved about 30 feet from her in the dining room and said, honey, what's for dinner? And there was no response. And then he moved 20 feet closer, and, and then 10 feet, no response. And he was right behind her, and he said, honey, what's for dinner? And she turned around and said, Ralph, for the fifth time, it's chicken. <laughs> Sometimes men don't hear very well. <laughs> Sometimes none of us hear well. You know, there are so many kinds of things in our incredibly disruptive modern world that keep us from hearing the call of God in our lives. Surely, if you're not praying, if you're not coming to regular Mass, you're not listening to the scriptures, I don't know how people get it. It's tough enough when we are here to get God's word. But we have to hear it before we can respond to it. Like Samuel in our first reading, it took him a quite a bit of time to recognize the voice of God. Since there are so many other voices, our first reading in Gospel remind us that people are often instrumental in helping us to recognize and to listen to God. Hopefully our parents, and maybe your priest, or maybe your religious education teacher. In Samuel's case, he needed Eli to help him here. In Peter's case, in the Gospel, it was his brother Andrew who led him to Christ. Both responded to God with the help of someone else. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that my only sister is a Franciscan nun, not only because she heard God's call, but there were many people who encouraged her and supported her. There's no doubt in my mind that I'm a priest for lots of reasons, but surely the positive support and the encouragement of so many people. And I'm sure that's the same with Deacon Robert. He just didn't out of the blue one day, this is what I'm going to do. With the help of his wife and those close to him in his prayer, he came to the point to be ordained a deacon. It's not a matter of God not calling. It's a matter of hearing God's call or refusing God's call. We'll never hear the call of God or anyone else as followers of Christ if we move from, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will, to here I am, Lord, I'm going to do what I want to do. World's full of that. Father Marty Pable is a priest from Milwaukee. He's a Capuchin. And for over 30 years, he has worked in the area of vocations to the priesthood and religious life through the Franciscan community. Many of his books are marvelous, and he wrote in one, it's our task as Christians to understand the will of God in our lives. And if we understand and discern that will, he says, we're going to be happy people. You don't have to be too smart to realize there are lots of unhappy people around us all over. They're just not getting it. Samuel discerned the will of God, and he became a prophet. <clears throat> Andrew discerned the will of God, and he became an apostle. We must discern the will of God if we are to be a father, a husband, but a priest and a religious and a deacon also. And we have to be living on Mars if we don't see that promoting gospel values like faith and permanence and fidelity and commitment and giving one's life to the mission of Christ is so necessary, you aren't living in Earth. Commitment and fidelity and permanence and faith as a truck driver, as a farmer, as a corporate person, 
but also as priest, religious, and deacon. May our prayer today be, here I am, Lord. I've come to do your will. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us. <coughs> ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess. <coughs> And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We raise our prayers and our petitions. We ask God to hear us. For those who dedicate their lives to the work of the church and for all who respond to the call of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who listen to the needs of their people and respond to them with honesty and humility, we pray to the Lord. For God's blessing on our young people, that they may all recognize their God-given dignity and unique gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper love of Jesus, the Lamb of God, offered and received in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children in the womb, and all whose right to life is being questioned. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community who put their commitment to justice into a practical action, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living members of the Rosary Society and for Celia Irma Usher, who is being remembered in this mass who has died that she may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people. Now let us make an offering. The song for the preparation of gifts is number 329, Bread Blessed and Broken. Number 329.
now, my brothers and sisters, that my gifts and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in this Mass, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory with one voice as we acclaim. Almighty Father, you have blessed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners and the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, for whom our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in his saving banquet, graciously to endow us with the very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop. As you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, 
the blessed apostles and all the saints, for our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 339, Behold the Lamb.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this meal be one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. One announcement today. Due to the Youth Faith Formation Mass this Wednesday, January 17th at 6.30 p.m., the Alpha meeting has been canceled. Please join us again on Wednesday, January 24th at 6.30 p.m. And now, please join in our closing hymn, number 204, God, We Praise You. Yeah.